trash can. I had two of the black ones. One of them um, somehow uh, sprung a leak. Uh, it was like a micro leak um, somewhere on the side towards the bottom. So I picked up this um, this brute trash can. It's funny. I was going to buy it from Home Depot, and then all of a sudden their prices went from twenty something all the way up to sixty for a twenty gallon brute trash can. So I ended up picking this up off of Amazon. I'm in the process of filling it up with the second batch of salt. Quick look at the 150 gallon per day pressure. It's going strong, almost 80. And I haven't changed this once. It's starting to show that it is needing a change. Uh, line going in is at four parts per million. And in between the two chambers, it jumps up to eight. And then coming out, line three zero parts per million pure water so but it is time to change some of the filters and the di resin is uh, the first chamber is definitely used but the second chamber still has a little bit of life in it into the sump and uh, we have over here some new Fiji rock which has been in the quarantine tank which is now empty so we're curing or cooking uh, let's see this is probably about 20 pounds and I let's take a look at it Let's see, this piece is not going in there. I don't like the way that one looks, but let me set that aside. And then we'll take a look. This is the tool that I use to drain water or pump it out. Um, I just attach that to one of the two utility pumps I use. Works really well. And... This is one of the risers, 4 inch, that my skimmer sits on. Uh, and then, alright, so we have a bag of carbon, and we have a couple pieces of Fiji rock, which is ordered from Bulk Reef Supply. Um, since I am more of a coral person, Lately, I've been trying to focus more on the saltwater fish, and since I do like to have a lot of fish in the tank, I need to uh, re a little bit to break up the territories that have been um, established by uh, the two dominant clownfish, and the medium size um, coral booty angelfish so that is the reason for adding more rock and some of these pieces for the most part they're flat which is what I was looking for and some of them will be broken up into smaller pieces and it's just mainly to um, switch up the rock work and then when I eventually upgrade to 120 or 125 gallon tank I won't have a need to purchase more rock so some really good pieces um, I definitely enjoy the rockscape I am a person who loves having a lot of rock in the tank but making sure it's just not like a wall of rocks over to this area and let me turn on the light on the camera be right back 15 gallon aquion column the 
aquarium and we got something cooking up in the process of curing uh, some extra pieces of Fiji relatively flat dry live rock um, it's basically dead rock that's been out of the ocean uh, the temperature in the back says 79 uh, can't really see it because of the glare but it's 79 uh, so when I do water changes I pull the water out of here and replenish it with some of the water from the display tank and we're gonna break up some of these pieces into smaller pieces but for the most part they're relatively flat and we'll be doing a slight re after we get through the curing process of bringing this dead rock back to life and there is let's see one two three four I think there's about five pieces in here um, and again uh, they're relatively big but for the most part they are uh, flat in comparison to other Fiji rocks and we'll get them curing and in the tank in about two to four weeks or so okay so as you know I run marine pure I have two uh, the one inch pieces and I think one quart of the marine pure um, bio balls and then I have uh, what is this this is the four inch by eight by eight piece there and that along with all the live rock in a tank uh, I usually um, don't have a phosphate or a nitrate challenge with this tank uh, so I've pumped in the new water uh, this is the skimmer and you can see it barely fits into the stand but look at that it's like three millimeters or maybe two um, and then on this side So we have the noise dampening pads down there, the four inch riser that the skimmer sits on, um, and that allows it to sit, uh, let's see, six, uh, about nine inches of water is what it sits in, nine to eight. And then we have the return pump and the 300 watt fluval E-series heater on this side. And then there's a utility pump that runs my um, carbon, oops, that runs the carbon and uh, hyposorb reactors. So that utility pump, the small one, runs both of these. And then the auto top off back there. So let me get another shot here. Still a lot of detritus on this side, but another time and on this side normally I keep two heaters this one right here uh, is a which one is this this is a hundred watt uh, yeah I think this is hundred watt let me see no this is the 50 watt uh, is it 50 it's either 50 or 100 watt heater I'm not sure probably 100 watt um, overkill in the heaters. There's three heaters. I have a 300, 200, and a 100 watt heater. Um, we get cold winters here on the East Coast, so um, it helps keep the water very temperature very stable. And yeah, so that's pretty much the setup. Cleaning the sump at least once a year, and the water's back in, and. Uh, get everything back online 
And as far as the tank, the fish are doing good. We have um, the five uh, cardinal um, fish right there, and they do school together, which I finally, uh, I'll probably order another five of those. Um, there's the angelfish. There's another angelfish. There's three angelfish. I'm hoping the tank will become an angelfish tank slash uh, cardinal. Um, I want to pick up uh, a pair of Bengai cardinals and then another uh, group of five of uh, these um, red tail spot cardinal fish. And, and maybe one more angelfish, but I may be happy with the three that I have now. That one right there, it's he mainly swims all over the tank. He was the first one placed in, and then there's the other angel. He stays on this side. And you can see him back there a little bit swimming. And then the red flame angel stays on this side. So by switching up the rock work, it will break up defined territories and help out with the aggression, especially with, ah, there he is, right there, there's the other angelfish, it's a um, orange and blue. I'll put the name of the new livestock list and their scientific names down below. And the description section, uh, there's the flame angel back in there. So if these three angels will cohabitate, I'll be happy with that and I won't add any more. I'll simply just add um, two, a pair of um, Bengai Cardinals and I think that will do it. Of course I say that now, but we'll see. Um, of course more corals. Um, the ones I just added are doing well. Can't really see them well, but you have the green bubble algae. Uh, excuse me, bubble coral. Uh, let's see, you have the grape coral in the back there. And the blue lights are on, so the color is not looking too good with this camera. And this one started to bleach out on me, but I think it's starting to come back. So I'm hoping I can bring it back. Uh, we'll see on that. Um, what else? Where is ah in the back Pasilopora purple and then there's another one there so I seem to have more success with uh, cockwasher in the auto top off so I may go back to that and just uh, deal with the fact that it will wear my pumps down a little bit faster or increase the maintenance on my pumps, but um, and then lastly, I damaged my leather coil in the back. I don't know if you can see that, so it tore, and I dipped it in the Seachem um, iodine reef dip. So hopefully that makes a comeback, and that will do it for now. Thanks for watching, welcome new subscribers, and stay tuned uh, for more updates.